This $40 mistake almost killed an entire family during a blackout, and it's probably sitting in your garage too. Today, I'm gonna to show you a safer, smarter, easy, inexpensive, and permanent way to power your home during an outage. No more cracked windows, no more spaghetti cords. This setup could save your life. Okay, so here I am at the back of my garage. This is a great spot for me to install this inlet because it's on the back of my garage, which makes it really easy for me to run the electrical line that I need to run. I don't have to run it very far from my panel, which is just on this exact same exterior wall. But also installing it right here, I'm gonna put it here. It'll be down fairly low, just a few feet off the ground, about right there, just so that the extension cord that runs from it doesn't have to droop very far into the ground. And then it can run and I can set up my generator right over here or right there where it's at. This power cable that I bought is 25 feet long, which is gonna be more than enough. It's gonna allow me to actually set the generator anywhere back here that I want to. And the really cool thing is that one, I'll be able to keep my windows totally closed instead of having to run extension cords through there. But also I can have this farther from my windows and have the exhaust port, which is down here. I can have that pointed this way. <laughs> So it's pointed in a direction away from my house. I could even honestly set it out here further so that any exhaust is blowing further that way sort of into my backyard. And that's just gonna really eliminate any risk of any carbon monoxide poisoning inside of my house. With the windows closed, it's already gonna be way better, but also with it just pointed away from the house and being this far away from the house, I feel really good about that. Okay, so if that's the spot on the outside, Here's the spot on the inside. And I just wanna use my, I've got a stud finder here that also can sense electrical and other stuff in the wall. And I'm just gonna look and make sure that I'm not gonna hit anything I don't want to. I do have a stud right there. The stud sensor's finding it, but I can also see it because there's little screw marks and tape running up along right here. So I'll just need to run my line in between. Got all along here. The only thing I'm picking up is the structural studs, so we should be good. So I can go ahead and I can drill my hole down here in the wall and a hole up there, and then we're gonna run that cable and see if we can pull it out with having to tear up anything too much. All right, next step, we get to go up into the attic, right up there. And we're gonna see what things are like up there. The good news is we've already run wires up there before um, for actually a hot tub that we have out back. So some of the work that we're gonna do has already been done for us. It's always nice when that happens. But we're running wire somewhere a little bit different, so we're gonna see what it's gonna entail. Should be a pretty easy job though. Okay, we can see here all the wires coming up. That's coming straight up from the panel, which is great, that's what we want. But then we're gonna run here along the wall all the way to that back corner. And it's in that corner that we're gonna drill down through the top plate, the top of this uh, framing and run it down through that wall. Pretty simple straight shot.
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mount the box here. This is all totally safe to do right now because it's not connected to live power. It's literally just running up into the ceiling, into the attic right now. So we can connect everything exactly how we should and then we'll move on from here. All right, we're finally at the point here where if you're not comfortable with electrical systems, you should probably call a professional who knows what they're doing. We're gonna be taking the cover off, not just opening the door here, but we gotta take off the cover. So nothing too complicated about that. There's just six screws here. I've done a bunch of these and they're pretty much all that way. You can use a big flathead screwdriver, but there's also this square shaped one that's common for electrical stuff and that fits in here too. We'll just take these off real quick. And that just falls right off. Now, at this point, you don't want to be touching anything inside there. Um, in fact, I probably should tell you to completely turn this off before you even open that. Uh, that would be the safest thing to do. We're not going to mess with anything there yet. I just need to get this cover off because we're going to be putting a special safety plate right here next. All right, that in the box came with this interlock. And I just need that plus a drill. Here's what we're doing. We're going to be installing a breaker right here means I'm gonna to have to move all the other ones up <laughs> but we're gonna install one right here right and that's gonna be for the generator this is gonna be off all the time except for when I need to run the generator when I run the generator the breaker main needs to be off otherwise I'll be back feeding my power from my generator to my grid we don't want that because we're preppers and we don't like to share no I'm just kidding we don't want to be hurting any line workers if the power's out somebody could be working on the line nearby and if we're feeding power to the grid and they're expecting that line to be dead we could hurt somebody. So when we turn on the generator, first we have to shut off the main, and then we can turn on the power from the generator. I'm also at that point gonna shut off any of these other circuits that I don't wanna use so that I can only leave on what I need. Otherwise, my generator is gonna try to power my whole house and I just don't have enough power for that. So that's how this works. This little switch plate is gonna slide up and down and it's gonna make it so that when the generator power is on, when that circuit breaker is flipped to on the main has to be shut off first it's going to force that to happen so it's basically going to keep us up to code and help make sure that we're doing the right thing this kit also actually comes with labels to help ensure that we do the right stuff here so i'm actually going to install this label right here in the breaker box this one here tells us exactly what to do how to run this thing every time there's another one here it's like a big warning label. We'll put it right next to that. So it's gonna warn anybody working on this thing that there could be power coming in from a generator. There's a drill bit that it came with. Put that in my drill. Okay, so because mine is arranged differently than a lot of typical ones where the main is actually up at the top of the breaker box, I actually have to do this a little bit reverse. Let me show you. So it's actually good, probably before you take it off the wall, to hold the plate up to it and see exactly how you're gonna have to arrange your own. Chances are, yours will probably be either like mine, where it's here at the bottom, kind of to the right, or it'll be like most typical ones where it's at the top, kind of to the left. So I actually have to put it there, and then I need to put my breaker on this side, not this side, okay? So these are the ones I'm gonna have to move up. So I'm gonna pre-drill these three holes, that out of the way. Now that's going to go on here and we're going to feed these little bolts up from the back. There we go. I'll go ahead and start this just so I don't lose that. Now I can tighten those down and they're not actually, it's going to still allow me to slide the plate because they're kind of a spacer. The little nuts on them are a spacer. So it'll allow me to slide the plate really well. But they can also keep the base plate on there good and tight. 
Next, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the main and I'm gonna move all those breakers up. And to make space, I'll have to pop out these last two spots up here at the top of my panel. the dryer, turn off the air conditioner, the garage outlets, we'll leave on the, we'll leave, turn, leave on the family room, turn off the garage lights, it's the washing machine, bathrooms, we'll leave on the microwave, the kitchen lights, turn off the hot tub, and there's the microwave. Okay, so now with that slid over, I can move that down, turn that on, and let's go see. All right, it's dark in here. Got, oh, power to the fridge, microwave's blinking. It's getting power. Range is still off, as I turn that off. Let's check, light switch. Ha ha, look at that. Well, my friends, this project is a massive success. I've got lights on here in my kitchen. I've got a microwave that'll work as long as I'm probably not running it at the same time as the oven and maybe the dryer. My furnace is even currently running. It's powered mostly by natural gas, so it only needs enough electricity to run the air handler, basically a fan that blows the warm air through my house, which my generator can totally power in addition to the lights and everything. So I've got heat, I've got light, I've got everything we need, and I'm doing it safely. I don't have to have a window cracked open or a door cracked open to let extension cords through. This is the kind of project that's gonna make your home substantially safer, and I hope what you've seen today is that it's a project you could totally do yourself, or at least most of it.